Hi there, my name is Chris with FileHold Document Management Software. Today I'll be taking you through the FileHold 16.3 release guide and giving you a quick overview of many of the different features that are available with FileHold 16.3. For those who have not had a chance to see it, hop over to our website and take a look at the FileHold 16.3 release guide. This will give you lots of tips and tricks and is a good guide to take you through all the new features and functions of FileHold 16.3. One of the first things you'll see with the FileHold desktop application is that we've given the top buttons on the ribbon a refresh. So, just like before, add file is here, but now we've added add offline documents. You can still make your local copy or check out your documents from here. When you have more than one document selected, you'll be able to link these documents together. We've also given you access to the assemble function, sending them through email, sending them to courier, or when you have permission to deleting documents. This is just a visual refresh of the different buttons that are available. We've also done a refresh to the search bar up top. Now in addition to doing the previous ad hoc searches where you can simply type in and run your search from here, you can also bring in one of your quick searches that you might have built, just in case you want to get to those faster. And as always, the advanced search function is available for you. FileHold now offers the ability to show documents linked by their metadata. You can see here I'm doing your standard advanced search and I'm looking for a common metadata field to look for documents that have that PO number. Now this is great if I'm in search mode, but if I was in an area, so let's just hop down over here to sales, orders, and look in my folder. When I'm looking at my different orders, I see a document here, and then I open up the file or metadata for it. If I want to see the related information, I no longer have to leave this screen. If I right click on where the PO number is, you can see I can look for any documents that share this value for metadata, share the value as part of that schema in the metadata, or share the value but is not part of the same schema, particularly important if I want to find related documents of a different sort. So if I select linked by value, it shows me the four documents, same as I had in the search before, that have the same metadata value for the PO number. Equally, I could also look for all the documents that have that value but are not part of the same schema to show the other related documents. FileHold now allows you to disable ad hoc searches for some users. Here I am in a user group and I can disable their ability to do ad hoc searches. By applying that, now when the users log in, they no longer have access to the same search functions, but they can still access any save searches that have been built for that group. This is designed to make FileHold easier to use for some who may need extra help. This is one of my personal favorites. Now, if you have a lot of different schema or metadata fields, now when you're doing your search, instead of having to use the arrow in order to scroll up and down, you can now use your mouse wheel. And quite frankly, that makes sometimes moving around a lot faster, especially when you have lots of shared metadata fields that you need to look through. Should make things much more efficient. There are several new features available with the file hold viewer. Let's start by taking a look at one of the most basic that everybody has access to. I'll open this document in my viewer and we can see that I've now got a bookmarks tab over here. By selecting this, I can go through and see the constituent documents that this was composed of or see any bookmarks that were made. This is especially useful if you're using our document assembly function, such as I did with this, where I can jump from document to document to see what specific changes were made from each one of the bookmarks. Here's a great new feature that goes along with our viewer. Now, if you're a level two or three viewer, you have access to be able to put comments onto documents. And if you're not a level two viewer, if you just only have your level one license, you can still look at those comments anytime you want to. Here's how that works. Now, right now I'm using a level two viewer, so I can open up uh, under my edit section here, and then I can highlight uh, some of the text, and then when I want to, I can put a comment onto it. Now I've got a chance to make a comment. So, you know, please check this number. That's now a comment that I've made. If I want to let someone, you know, if I want to point this out to someone, if I want to make sure that they know what's happening, I could even do an at at the beginning of it. And then when that at comes through, it'll ask me if I want that person. In this case, I do. So I'm going to say yes, let's put this note over to Andy. And then I'm going to publish this. This will send an email over to Andy. And then when he logs in to the, his account, he'll be able to open this document up and see this notation on it. So the comment now comes on top of this. As well, too, I can hover over top and it tells me when the comment was created, any sort of the other details that are about it, and it kind of tags that for information just in case I need to know it for later on. There's also been a general refresh with the viewer. You can see the new buttons and layout up top here. As well, if you're an, a level two or three user, you'll also see some new buttons appear when you open up a context menu from highlighting text. 
Filehold now offers redaction as part of our new Level 3 viewer. Here, for example, you see a bunch of values that I have, and as a Level 3 viewer, I can highlight some of the text if I wanted to, and then select Redaction. This will put a temporary black bar over top of it that I can then save. Once saved, I can publish this as a new version of the document. Let's say, for example, I make this as a new version and say OK. Now, anybody else who opens this document will see this as a fully redacted version. Here we can see our, let's just jump down to the page. Here we can see our redacted version of the text, which I have access to. And then I have the previous version of the document here without the redaction over top. This also redacts the text from within search and for any other users as well. As a published version, this is no longer text that's visible. Redaction is now a very simple tool to use with FileHold's Level 3 viewer. If you use Microsoft Office products, this is a fantastic tool for bringing your documents in quickly. Here you can see I've got a checked out Word file, and then when I open up my Word application, I can see here's my document and I've got an edit that I've made to it. I've now completed all my changes to it, and I want to check this document back in. Those of you who use the file hold button up on the ribbon will see that we've got a new tool in here which is Quick Check-In. What this will do is bring the document back into file hold, close the current version that I have, and bring all the existing metadata over. Now if you have to modify your metadata or do any of those fine tuning to the, de to the document when it comes in, use the standard check-in. But if it's just, I've made my changes, that's all I want to do, hit the quick check-in button, the document uh, closes out here in Word, I can minimize that, and then when I come back to over here, our new version is now available for the next person to work on. You can now pin the Show Documents menu to the screen. Here's an example. I've got a link on this document, so when I select this, it shows me the documents that are linked to it. I can then pin that menu, and by doing this, I can move around to different areas of the screen, and it will update the menu down below. In this case, there's no link, so it doesn't give me a value. But over here, I do see what documents are linked to this one. The advantage of this means is that if I'm looking at different kinds of documents, I don't have to reopen the window each time. I can pin the menu as I need to. Adding documents to a workflow has also been simplified. Now if I right-click on a document and go over to my workflow menu, instead of having to try to choose which ones are in there, I can actually filter my list. For example, here I can see active workflow tasks that were assigned to me or postponed workflows that were initiated by me. I can also go through and filter through my list to only choose the uh, workflow templates that I'm currently running. So this is designed to make the whole process of adding an existing doc or adding a document to an existing workflow that much simpler. We're giving more options for the workflow status report. Now when you open up the filter, you can see a bunch of more categories, such as uh, being able to look through your workflows by the current activity participant, or see what's happening in your current activities for what's overdue or going to be due in X number of days. This lets you really drill down and see what current workflows you have active. Also important, you can pin some of these functions so that you're able to move them to the top of the list so that the next time you come here, it'll only be the filters that you want to see. This way, you can, hide your, you can run your results through, hide the ones you don't need, and get the report quickly. So even though we're giving you more information, we're also making it easier to use. The workflow dashboard has also been enhanced. Now when we open up the dashboard, we're going to see a bit more of an animated pie chart. So I move my mouse over top, it gives me some bit more highlighting, makes it a bit more uh, visually easy to see what I'm looking at. But more importantly, when I select one of the pie slices, it actually takes me over and shows me the details of what's happening with that right for my reviews and approval status report, or workflow status report, right from there. And then when I'm done, I can hop back over to the dashboard and do further work if I need to. FileHold's user-defined events have also been enhanced with some new timing options. We now offer the ability to align the date. None is the default, but you can also set it to align to the month, quarter, calendar year, or fiscal year, and then set your timings based on that. Particularly useful if you're required to review documents on a quarterly basis. You're allowed to configure what the start of that fiscal year is. By default, it's April 1, but you can choose a date that works better for you. Virtual folders are a powerful way to organize documents for your organization, but we've given you some new functions to be able to make them even more useful. Now when you go into the properties on a shared fo virtual folder, you can choose whether or not to allow document publishers or hired to add documents, or add your team to remove documents. FileHold now allows you to use merge tags 
to push information into MS Word documents directly. Now we've always been able to use our level 2 viewer to uh, publish a, a PDF of any document that has merge tag information, which could be metadata for the document, pushed into the header or the footer or even as a watermark over top of the document. But this new feature that we have will enable you to use those same tags to push it directly into an MS Word document itself. So if you're using Word, you can now push information to the header, the footer, any of the banner information that you might need directly pulled from the metadata for the document. An extremely powerful feature. Here's a quick roundup of the, some of the other features to highlight. The first one is our server-side PDF and TIFF compression. Similar to server-side OCR, when a PDF or TIFF comes into the system, compression will automatically run over top of those documents to compact them down to a smaller size. This is an optional feature, and you can purchase it alongside with server-side OCR or separately. So you could have either the compression or compression OCR or just OCR. Full text searches have also been improved, where now we can focus in on a library location or a document schema before we run the search, which will make for much greater efficiencies with your searching. If you use database lookups, we now allow a mass update, so you can do multiple documents at a single time by using the lookup function. Hiding documents until they've been approved can be an important part of any process, especially if you're dealing with sensitive documents or ones that need a formal approval before they're released. Now we have the ability to hide all but just the current approved version of a document, so if you have prior approved versions, they can also be hidden as well. Export scripts are now available to send documents, and more importantly, their metadata, to other systems. This is a professional service that can be set up, but now it's very easy to do. For those of you who are users of our Watched Folder function, we now can use our automated document importation to apply both extraction rules and auto-filing scripts and templates to be able to push those documents into, the, into your system. So a great improvement with Watched Folders. FileHold now allows you to block user browsing within the library. This means that users who are blocked would have to use search in order to locate their documents. This can be a great saving of resources, especially if you're dealing with very mature systems that have lots of documents inside the folders. Enhance your server-side OCR function by being able to fine-tune your settings. Auto-rotate, de-askew, remove blank pages, and de-hole, that's removing the punch holes that you may have from scanned documents, are now features that you can turn on or off. Thank you so much for joining me today to have a look at FileHold 16.3. We're very proud of the release, and we do hope it'll help you to take your documents to new levels of efficiencies. Thank you so much, and have a great day.